All right, <clears throat> so what we're trying to do here is make this with HTML and CSS. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, try to get all the semantics down. So first things that I notice on this are it's got a header, main, and footer. So. Let me hop over to my index HTML and just start setting up this document. Do the meta, right, there it goes. Rel style sheet. Oops. That's not the meta. That's the link. Put the style sheet in there. I don't think there was a uh, title spe specified on this. Let me see. Nope. Call it layout. And we'll give it the character set. And then in the body, I'm going to put a header, footer, and a main. All right, so those are the big sections. Now I'm going to focus in on the header. So there's two broad areas of this header. Um, this thing with the brand name and the brand slogan and the tagline, and then that navigation over on the left. I can't think of a good semantic name for the thing on the left, so I'm gonna make that a div. And then the other thing is a navigation, so I'm gonna call that a nav. And the brand name, that's the primary heading. So I'll call that an H1. And the thing under it is paragraph text. So we'll say, oops, I should probably turn on do not disturb. And brand name and brand slogan and tagline. Brand slogan and tagline. Okay, in that nav, that's a list of links. And so we'll put it in a list. And each one of those is an anchor. Oh, please, uh, uh, ask questions as, uh, as we go. Because semantically, it's a list of links. So even though it wouldn't necessarily show up as a list with bullet items or something like that. You're going to have to get rid of the bullets. Right. Okay. Uh, but remember, we're not thinking about how it looks. We're thinking about what it is. Okay. And so a list of links is still a list. Okay. And since the order of those links doesn't have any semantic meaning, it's unordered. So that would make it a UL. Yeah, cool. Like, you'd really kind of use that in any place in programming where you'd use an array. All right, so I've got that one. How many are there? Five, four, three, four, five. So we have home, about, services, blog, and contact. OK, cool. So that header has all of the content that this is going to have. Cool. I'm going to skip over to the footer. So this has 
Is it, did did you, any of you pick up on what the semantic tag for legal text is? Nope. Small for the fine print. So this is going to have a small tag. Um, and that copyright and the circle C, you shouldn't actually use both of those. Um, but there's a thing called HTML entities. They start with an ampersand and they end with a colon. And there's, I don't know, a couple dozen of them that you can use to make really common symbols. So the copyright one is that one. Yeah, but that probably also makes the Unicode symbol for it. Either one's fine. Um, I just want to make sure that you are aware that uh, those HTML entities exist. Because there's a lot of them, and some of them are kind of handy. Like. So, yeah, if you have to do those, which are like things that you use in HTML all the time, like you can escape them by using the entities instead. Um, just copy, reference, chart. Yeah, so like all these little um, like accented glyphs and stuff, all of those have uh, character entities that you can use. Or you can just copy and paste the symbol, but they both work. Um, 2015, all rights reserved, domain name. All right, so that's what's in my footer. And then what's in between? Hmm, curious. So I'm not quite sure what this, like, you know, graphic placeholder is. It's probably some kind of hero. I I need some kind of container for all of that. I can't think of a more specific one, so we'll call that a hero. And then it has two children. Uh, a hero is uh, something that kind of serves that that visual purpose. Uh, it's supposed to attract a bunch of attention. Anytime you've gone to a website and there's like a giant splash image with like some text across it, it's called a hero image. Because it's saving the day and doing all the work. So inside of that, I've got two uh, images, looks like. And I'll give those alt text. Okay, and then below that, I'd probably call this a section. Although the reason I, I hesitate for a little bit is I don't see a, a heading for it. And semantically, uh, one of the things you can tell like a section is different than a div is would it have a heading? And this would, even though it's not showing up. It's like features and benefits or something like that. And it's actually fairly common to put the tag in there anyway, even if you're not going to display it, because semantically, it has a heading. Visually, it may hide the heading, but it doesn't mean that it's not semantically a part of it. So say features and benefits. And I'm kind of inclined to make this a list too, because it's, like, it's a list of features and benefits. I could probably be talked out of that one, but I think I'm going to roll with that for right now. So, all right, those have, those have headings. So, we'll say, Warum Ipsum. If you're not familiar with uh, Warum Ipsum text, it's actually super old. It doesn't, that's just, uh, that's the kind of function that's being served by that. You could call it whatever. But when you go to a site and it um, has that kind of layout, it's usually a product. It's like uh, amazing uptime. Like, we know that like there's nothing worse than letting your customers down and all that kind of shit. It's a feature benefit. 
It, it will right now because we haven't styled anything yet. Um, but since it's not in the mock-up, I'm going to hide it. Uh, Lorem Ipsum text is, it goes back to some monk. Yeah, 1500s. So anytime somebody was like working on typesetting or trying to do layout and just needed filler text, uh, Lorem Ipsum was the text that was used. And so what's kind of interesting about it is you can start it anywhere in here and it has the general kind of look and cadence and rhythm of real text. Um, okay, so I got a lorem ipsum there, and then vestibule, let's see, vestibule, oh yeah, I don't see it there either, weird. So, it's got an image. I'm torn between whether that's an image or a figure. I'm going to go with image, but part of me still thinks that should be a figure. What's the difference between the two? Um, a figure is like something that um, illustrates something and is often captioned. Exactly. Um, or like anything you read in a magazine where they have like a diagram or something and it's got a little caption under it or an illustrative picture, uh, those, are, those are figures. And you still use the image tag, but you put it inside of a figure. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna go with image on that. And now I'm deciding to, is the image and text is that one unit? And I kind of want to say, I want to say yes. I'd be okay adding that in, but I'm going to try to do it without it first. Um, so this is a, um, illustration. Then we have a paragraph. We'll do a little bit of lorem ipsum in there. It's about that much. And then there's a there's a link under that. That's going to have to end up going in some kind of container, but I don't know what yet. So Stacy and I were just talking about this. Those little double carrots on that, those are completely decorative. Those don't have anything semantically to do with the content at all. So I'd actually keep those out of the HTML. And there's a way that you can append little decorations like that in CSS. It's pretty cool. Like. They don't seem like they're actually part of the content, and so. Um, I do know that there's like a entity that uh, you can put within. Yes. Um, but I'll show you how we can do that with CSS, and I think that's probably a little bit more honest to the, to what this is trying to do. Okay, so now I have all the content in here. I am going to put a class on this so I can target it a little bit better. Um, features and benefits. And let's take a look at what it looks like right now without any styling. Oops, something it doesn't like. I think I didn't, oh, there we go. It's all trying to do all of it in the title. All right, so here's a, like an, an important point I wanna highlight. Without any styling, this is still perfectly usable and readable. And like that's one of the ways you can tell that you did this right is, uh, and they didn't make it too attached to any particular presentation, is that this should still read like a regular hierarchy top to bottom, even without any kind of styling. Um, it just looks like it's 1995. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's dig in on some styling. <clears throat> First thing that we need to change is the typeface. Like, that's not 100% off, but 
that is those are pretty close but you can see like the a for example the a in um times new roman or whatever this is that little that fat nub that hangs off of the a it looks super different in that typeface this one's a lot more chunky yeah so but it's clearly like kind of from the same family so let's go over to google fonts and uh that that family is called uh, a serif serifs are the little feet if like you look at the m's those little feet that are on those those are called serifs and they help guide your eye along the letter. So when you're doing long form text, it's a lot easier for your eye to stay on the same line because it subconsciously kind of follows those feet. Um, so if I narrow this down to serif typefaces and then I narrow it down to the most popular ones, ones that have a ton of styles, It's not, I think Tiburage is probably the closest. Yeah, let's take a look at the lowercase a. This has a little bit more attitude to it, but I like it. Let's roll with it. Crimson Pro. So, now I'm going to look at and see if there's any uh, other weights I need on this. Not really. Those kind of all look like the same. So we'll go with uh, default on that and we'll import it in. And then we'll say that the bodies font family is Crimson Pro with a default fallback to whatever the included sans serif is. And already this is like looking less ghetto. Um, cool, some other things that like, that make a lot of sense to do right off the bat. This is called resetting. Your browser has a style sheet built in that makes things look a certain way. Like it gives you a little bit of padding. It makes the H1s bigger than the H2s, bigger than the paragraphs. And we kind of want to like get rid of some of that. So that's a start. Might be some others. Oh, I could. Yeah, let's try that. My reset. That dude was supposed to be here yesterday. No, day before that. Um, yeah, and he uh, had to cancel because of the weather. Um, Dave Meyer, Chris Meyer, Eric Meyer. There we go. Hey, what's up, Amy? What's up? What's you doing? Uh, we're doing uh, an impromptu like walkthrough on that CSS and HTML exercise. It's being recorded. Absolutely. All right, I'll keep going. If you guys got to bounce to that. Uh, okay, so. Uh, I've included the reset in here, and we'll say this is our stuff. All right, neat. So first thing I'm going to do is try to get this uh, header, this little standalone header. look okay. So I'll say background color is HSL 0, 0%, zero percent, and then like that's a that's a kind of dark one. So I'll say that's like 30%. It also sort of looks like it has a little bit of red in it. We'll see. That was pretty close. It's a little bit darker. a little bit too much, so maybe right in between. That's about right. 
And then I'll say that the, um, I do feel like there's like a tiny bit of red tint to that. And so I can add some of the saturation back in. Like that's too much, but I think that's in the ballpark. Maybe even a little less than that. Okay, cool. And then all of the text in this kind of has that um, that really light yellowy sort of color. So I'm going to say that the color is red, red, green, blue. Um, I think it's a little after red. So what's 50 50% 50 90% look like. Hey, kind of got in the ballpark. So it's way less saturated than that. And I think even more than that. And a little bit darker too. Hey. Not bloody bad. Ooh, actually, it's not doing our typeface, though. And this should be serif, not sans serif. But I don't feel like it's doing that. Let me look on Google Fonts, see how it wanted me to. Crimson, yeah. I feel like you got that right. All right. Okay, so the colors are like not super far off on that. Uh, I think it's probably even a little bit blander than that though. Yeah. All right, so next thing, there's a little bit of padding on the top and bottom and sides. So I'm going to say that this has a padding of, let's base it on the font size. So we'll call it two rems on the top and maybe six rems on the side and see what that gets us. That's too much. All right, that's kind of in the ballpark. Now I need to make that the H1 is like a little bit bigger. Uh, yes, I will. So I'm going to make that H1. Like maybe 24 pixels. That's too much. Okay, that's better. Probably doesn't help that this is super zoomed in. Gooey. Okay, I think I got that side one sort of in the ballpark. I'm going to go more padding top and bottom. That's a little bit better. And okay, what else needs doing here? So the entire header is kind of display flex, and its contents are justified space between. Cool. All right. I'm not sure why there's so much space under the. Oh, I see. It's because the list over there is pushing that down. Okay, so if I say the header um, nav ul um, I 
I'll say that these should be display inline block. Inline block makes it so that they are all side by side, but they still have padding and margin and the things that block elements tend to have. Uh, the color on those is the same as up here. Um, I don't know if we'll do that without, yeah. So I have to target the anchor on those. And then those don't have underlines on them, so let's get rid of those too. That's a text decoration. Um, also, those are caps, which you can do um, in CSS. So we can do text transform uppercase. Very nice. Um, each of those has like a little um, kind of box around it also. So I'm going to say that's probably part of the LI. And uh, let's see if I give this a little bit of padding and say that it, uh, let's see, this has a different background color. I'm going to base it on the one that we did for the overall header, though. It's just a little bit darker. Okay, very nice. This is one of the weirdest, most confusing things, I think, in uh, CSS. Those little spaces, you know what those are? Check this out. This is actually part of the HTML. I think this is so annoying, but um, the way that you fix this is you put these on the same line. And see, now they're all right next to each other. It actually interprets that return between them as like a regular space. Um, suck. Uh, it's just, it's a reality we got to deal with. All right, this is starting to get in the ballpark. I feel like those have like a little bit more padding on them. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Cool. So now I'm going to do the uh, the footer as well. So let's take a look at this. Some of the stuff is going to be the same, and this is where we can start kind of refactoring uh, a couple of these things out. Like this padding. <laughs> Is that the exact same kind of padding? It sort of looks like it. What if I say that this padding applies to the header and the footer? All right. And that keeps those having sort of the same, the same line. Uh, you can see that the brand name and brand slogan and the copyright symbol all have the same alignment. So why don't we give the main that also sick. So now we're getting a, like a, a much better vertical alignment. Um, also the header and footer are the same color. Um, so let's do header, footer, are they also doing that same reverse text? Mm, the footer text is a little bit different, but what I'm going to do is say that they start the same, and then I'm going to override it in the footer um, by saying that this color it looks like it doesn't, it's just a lot darker. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. So, awesome, we're getting to the ballpark. Um, and then, um, cool, let's figure out maybe these images. 
next. So this is in hero. And we want, let's, uh, let's flex that. So we'll say display flex and then justify content. Those should be in a row and they, I'm gonna say they can wrap, but I don't actually feel like great about that. And then, um, I'm gonna say that hero image nth child one and two. This is kind of a neat thing we can do with flex. We can say that this is like the flex part of it, is we can say that the second one should always be three times bigger than the first one, whatever they are. Um, and then we end up with something like that. And um, let's see, let's go get some placeholder images for that. So, all right, image URL should look like that. And So that gives us a couple of images. Those have that little gutter in between them. So we can also say that the second one should have a margin left of whatever the gutter is. Let's call it 10 pixels. Okay, it looks about right. Um, and then we want to constrain the height on these also. So we can say that every image that comes down from a hero has a height of um, 100 pixels. Okay, a little bit more. God, takes forever to load. Had uh, I've had goofy internet all day. Any day now. All right, that's kind of in the ballpark. So next thing I'm going to do is features and benefits. Is that twice? It's not quite twice that. These images. So this would be maybe 250 pixels. Let's try that. So for features and benefits, first thing we need to do is hide that H2. So we'll say display none. And then um, this UL, we're going to make that a flex container and then flex its children. So we'll say features and benefits. Um, UL display flex. And then this should be, um, this should be uh, justify content uh, row wrap. Um, cool. 
Rachel said no rap. All right, my, oop, I think I, my video, I don't think it was on the video anymore. It's all right. All right, there we go. So now I got these showing up uh, side by side. Now we need to figure out how we're gonna get them, that like kind of separation between them. I sort of feel like, hmm. I kind of feel like these images push those down. And so if I go up here to hero and put a margin bottom on it of a couple rems. Let's see what that does. Ugh, my auto layout's still being slow. A little bit more. All right, that's about right. All right, next thing. The those H3s, those are gray. That's like a kind of light medium gray and they're uppercase. So we can say features and benefits H3 and uh, color is zero, zero. 60% maybe, and um, text transform uppercase. All right, let's check the color on that. It's darker. And it's also, it's also heavier. So I'm going to say font weight 700. I don't think I actually installed 700. Oh, I did. There it is. OK, that's a lot better. And I'll also say that those should have a margin bottom of like one rem that pushes that down. All right, that's good. All right, now that illustration. Let's see how I want to do that. I'm going to say that, actually first, let's fix the um, margin in between these. There's actually a really interesting selector you can use for that that's uh, super helpful. So I want to target um, the features benefit the direct descendant UL, so if I end up using an unordered list in the like benefits or something, it doesn't try to target those. And then I want every LI that immediately follows an LI. And um, what I wanna do is set a margin left of uh, a couple rems. And let's see what that does. Nice, gives them a little bit of uh, breathing room from each other. Okay, so next thing, the text height on that text, first of all, the color is wrong on the text, um, but also the uh, text height is super different. So I'm gonna say that the color, let's start it at that 40% also. I, I think that might be the same color as the heading. It's just the weight of the heading makes it look darker. All right, I'm going to start there. And then um, the text height, I think it's text height. Uh, let's start with two. Is it percent? I can never remember which one that is. OK, is it that? Almost positive, it's the um, it's text height, not font height. 
Lion height. There we go. And there we go. I thought it was. I could do something like two. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit too much. So we'll call that maybe one and a half. Okay, that's pretty good. And then that. Mm, let's see. We need to get the illustration in there. So I'm going to say, let's use the same placeholder image. Now that we have real images in there, perfect. Um, now I want to float those. So I'm going to say that features and benefits image should float left. Cool. Um, looks like they also have a little bit of margin on them. Mm, huh. You know, these have that little border around them. That would come from a figure. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that really is a figure. Um, and wrap that. All right, and then I'll say that features and benefits figure um, should be the thing that floats left. It should also have a border that is one pixel. Um, Solid, and that looks like a that looks like a pretty light gray. So we'll do the same color as the text. Zero forty percent, and it has a padding of like five pixels. Okay. Okay, it's way lighter than that. Okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, I feel like it's got maybe a little bit more padding than that. That's too much. That's probably in the ballpark. And then I'm going to shrink up that um, image to 100 pixels. Oh, pro tip, if you're going to set one dimension of something, always set the width. Um, oh, it says they're 80. Oh, pixels. All right. That's not too bad. I feel like the uh, padding's too much now, though. I don't know why it has that extra little bit on the bottom. I'm going to inspect that and figure out what's going on. That might be another. OK, so why does that figure have? Is it from the border? It's from the border. Weird. I don't know why it's doing that. How strange. I wonder if it does that on every browser. Weird. All right. Um, I'm not too worried about that for right now. 
I do want to give it a give these figures a little bit of margin on the top and bottom. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, those um, those grays are really too dark though. That's not quite enough. That's better. And H3, lighten that up too. All right, that's the ballpark. All right, next, let's get that uh, read more. Let's get that read more link popping. So, read more. Um, I'm going to need to put this in a wrapper because I want to flex that over to the um, to the left side. Yeah. So this is going to be um, a link. Cool. And so then these links should be um, features and benefits. Links should be um, justify content right, display flex. Cool. Um, it should have no text decoration. Oh, it needs to be on the um, anchor. Features and benefits. Link anchor has no text decoration. Okay, very nice. And then its color should be that orange. So that's a like medium saturation orange. So let's go with 50 again. Half saturation, half light. What does that get us? Not saturated enough. Um, should be this should go maybe a little bit more towards the red. Yeah. It's a little too red. There we go. That's pretty good. Here's another cool thing that we can do with these: is um, you can. Those little uh, carrots, those don't actually have anything to do with the content. Those are a decoration. And so since we're trying to do only presentation in our CSS, why don't we say after those, we want some content, say double right carrot. And you can like actually just copy the Unicode symbol and put it in there, a little bit of space, and there we go, adds it in there, it's pretty good. So next thing, there's in this entire section, which was features and benefits. In the entire section, that had quite a bit of margin on it also. The features and benefits. Margin, bottom, uh, three rems. That yeah, looks about right. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got. Do those look the same? It's constrained a little bit differently. All right, there we go. Okay, those are definitely in the ballpark. Okay. 
Okay. See, when you do that, it scrolls though, which we don't want. All right, so. I think that H1 has more weight. So I'll say font weight 700. That's too much weight. Better, we'll load. Header looks okay. The um, hero has, has a little bit more height than that. Maybe it is 300. Oh, yeah, it even says it's 300. Makes sense. Okay, so we have 300 there. It's got a little bit of space under it. I think we're kind of in the ballpark on the headings. Still don't know where that extra little bit of bottom border is coming from. That is nuts. Okay, the text looks pretty good. And the footer. Oh, is that a... I'm feeling like... All right, I think that the header and footer color is just a tiny bit darker. And since we have those all in one place, that makes that quite a bit easier. All right, so that's darker. There we go. I think that's it. And then I feel like maybe the footer text is not quite that dark. Yeah, that's better. All right, cool. And that is... I'm still... Okay, I'm kind of irritated about this font choice now. So let's swap out the font. What if we went with this one? So we're going to get rid of Crimson Pro. IBM Plex Serif. So we'll grab that one. And this will be IBM Plex Serif. Yeah, it's still not. Mm, something's still not quite right about that. This is. Yeah, this condensed one, Tavarage. Let's. I'm sure I said that very eloquently. Uh, let's give that a shot. So we'll say Tavarage. Ah, come on, man. There we go. All right, that's a uh, that's better. It's still not it's still not quite there, but. Uh, that is roughly how I would lay out this page. Um, thanks so much for watching.